further and welcome to the midweek edition of the midday brief with me Kemini Nyamani Aman. Over the next 60 minutes, here are some of the stories you should expect. President John Dramani Mahama appoints new municipal chief executive. Also, Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark World's Day against child labor. We'll be looking at exactly what we are doing today. And then CPP turns 64 today. We'll look at the party in general and we'll be talking to uh, a member of the party, Lucy Enin, later on in the bulletin. And then finally, the American fire experts are here. We will go over to the telephone lines and talk to our presidential correspondents on when they start to work, how they will go about it. So stick and stay with me. I'll also bring you briefs uh, from across the globe, uh, sports, showbiz, and then some wellness tips when I return. In our first story, President John Dramani Mahama has appointed the following persons as Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives for the Central Region. They are Alex D. Nchibwe Siakon for Asin North, Teofilos Eiju Mensa for Gomua West, Ni Ephraim Efutu Municipal, Francis Kofi Kranche Sinti Sechi for Chifo Heman Lower Dentra. Ibrahim Kweku Dawson for Ikumfi District. Now he has also nominated another group of eight municipal and district chief executives for approval by the various assemblies. They include Al Haji Latif Majud, Adanse Nos, Ebenezer K. Akoko, Frimpon Setre for Central for Central and then Kwame Adakwa Bosum Ferho Richard Ofori Ajiman Buedi. Abwase and Paul Kingsley Awe Averu Asante Achim North. The rest are Donkot Fuseni for Setre Afram Plains Al Haji Nuru Hamidan for Asokore Mampong Al Haji Berima Boyong for Asante Achim Central. And the names were issued in a statement signed by the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development Akwesi Opong Fusu. So let's move on. And this year's World Day Against Child Labor, which falls today, is on the theme No Child Labor in Domestic Work. Now, every year on June 12th, the World Day Against Child Labor is observed to raise awareness of the plight of child laborers worldwide. To combat child labor around the world, the International Labor Organization initiated the World Day Against Child Labor in 2012. Well, and in an, an, an estimated 10.5 million children worldwide, most of them under age, are working as domestic workers in people's homes, in hazardous and sometimes uh, slavery-like conditions, says the ILO. Now, six and a half million of these child laborers are aged between five and 14 years old. More than 71% are girls. According to the latest figures in the new ILO report ending child labor in domestic work, they work in the homes of a third party or employer carrying out tasks such as cleaning, ironing, cooking, gardening, collecting water, looking after other children and carrying, caring rather, for the elderly. Now, stakeholders in the labor organization are therefore urging to, as a matter of urgency, ratify the International Labor Organization Convention 189 on domestic workers to help sanitize that sector and also curtail the use of children in that area. We don't consider them as members of our families and we don't consider them as workers. So where do they belong? So the convention and then the advocacy we are playing this day and we want you to carry to the field. If they are not family members, they are our employees and must be given the right to live as decent human beings. Sometimes the domestic workers are put in the corner that they don't even have the right to come and watch the TV. If you treat them well, you may be get the best from them, though there are a few exceptions. If we want to ratify it, then government must make sure that the necessary structures are on the ground, effective monitoring, effective inspection, so that we'll be able to track it, so that it works. Other than that, we'll ratify it and it will be on the shelf. How cannot be implemented. The uh, representatives of labor, representatives of employers, representatives of government will have to sit and see if it's feasible for us to ratify it. After that, uh, cabinet must also look at it. The ministry will make submission to cabinet for cabinet to look at it, how relevant it is uh, to our economy. 
you get me? So they also look at it. When cabinet admits that it should be ratified, then it must go to the uh, uh, parliament for parliament also to look at it before if parliament accepts, then that is it. So we now cross over to Parliament to speak to our correspondent, Emmanuel Ante, on proceedings in the House and how the House are marking the day. Hello, Ima? Yeah, yeah hello, um, Kevin. Uh, what are the MPs saying about uh, the issue of child labor? Today, we, we, we are working towards, again, another year working towards uh, the, uh, moves towards... Uh, in eliminating child labor, exactly what are uh, uh, members of parliament saying? Well, the deputy minister for labor relations, and she was gave a statement on the floor of parliament, and they were condemning uh, child labor and especially domestic child labor, which is now becoming rampant in the homes of uh, all Ghanaian uh, uh, people. And they, he attributed it to the fact that we are all not supporting everybody everybody in the country is not supporting in eliminating uh, child labor from our system and uh, in her in his statement uh, in the contribution to whatever he said uh, i think Siyama also challenged him and said asked him why he was even crying to parliament because it is ministry that is supposed to deal with that particular problem and yet he was crying to parliament to rather come in to uh, salvage the situation so, um, and, and then the uh, Deputy Minister also for uh, Women, Children and Gender, um, Rachel Apo, also gave uh, her statement and she was condemning the, the act and said her ministry is going to do uh, things that are going to um, uh, help in the, in the eradication of uh, child labor from the system. She was talking basically on the fact that um, uh, her ministry uh, in partnership with UNICEF is formulating a national child protection policy to enhance the safety and security of the children. Uh, he said they also, she also said they intend to strengthen the capacities of officials handling the social protection intervention. And these issues, uh, he says, uh, are also related to human trafficking, which he says they are doing everything they can to ensure that this uh, incident is uh, minimized to the barest minimum. But, uh, uh, in, in, indeed, Ghana, the ILO says, we do have the policies, we have the framework. Now, the problem is with implementation. What are our lawmakers saying about implementation? Because the policies, like you, you have said, that they have mentioned, are already in place. Why are we not implementing them? Did they, did they say anything yeah. concerning that? Yeah, that's what uh, uh, the Deputy Minister for um, uh, Labor Relations was saying, uh, was asking for uh, stringent measures to ensure that uh, the, the laws that have been passed are implemented to the latter. And so now it's, it seems uh, from what we have, from what I heard from uh, the ministers and the other contributors of the right. house, it means there is, uh, there is um, a positive move to ensure that those laws are adhered to, to the best, especially when they realize, when they go from the facts and figures given to them by the ILO, that uh, child, uh, domestic child uh, violence and domestic child abuse and labor is on their right. So they have vowed and they said they are going to look at the laws again and see if there are any loopholes that uh, will ensure that they, they, they tackle it and then will help in the discharge of uh, the duties. And they also encourage uh, the law enforcers to be able to use the law to its fullest uh, uh, maximum because they think they have passed the law, they have done their bit, and yet the agencies that are supposed to carry out these laws are not doing their job well. So they are calling for the agencies that are the security agencies to be able to um, uh, enforce the laws to a fullest minimum, uh, maximum. Sorry. All right. Thank you very much. Emmanuel Ante is my colleague, and he joined us from Parliament House and members of the house have also been marking the day against child labor now let's move on with the news and the, a suspected mastermind behind the recent shooting at ashanti newtown in kumase which claims two lives has been arrested in accra the suspect aka mark fuss 27 was picked up by the accra police command at his hideout at makasi hills at 10 p.m on sunday following a tip-off the U.S. team of investigators going to help 
unravel the causes of fires, especially in our markets, has commenced work. Deputy Information Minister Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed says the investigators have already met with local investigators for briefing. Speaking at the daily media briefing at the presidency, the Deputy Information Minister could not confirm where the investigation will start from and when it will be over. Mutala Mohammed, however, believes the collaboration between Ghana and the United States investigators will speed up the process. We have been joined on the telephone line by Joy News presidential correspondent Seth Kwame Bwati. Hello, Seth. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too. Now, how important is this Ghana American investigator uh, collaboration? Uh, how, how, how important is this? Well, we all want to know exactly what is behind the fires in the country. So, the president last week when he just said the Makola number two market indicated that the U.S. had offered to help Ghana with investigators to really help investigate the fire. So they arrived last night and the deputy information minister said they started work immediately when they touched down. They've held meetings with our investigators and so the process has started. But he couldn't tell us where they will start from and when they will finish. But he said certainly it will take quite uh, some days for them to do it. But he believes in the collaboration between the two countries the process will, will be fast-tracked. How, how many members of the U.S. team are we looking at? Well, he was unable to tell us. He says most of the information that security agencies would have to give to us, and he was in the position to tell us uh, the, 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 co the composition of the team in Ghana now. And, and were, were you able to gather which markets at all, at least, they, where they are starting from? We asked him that question, and he said... He wasn't in a position to tell us and that we can best find out from the uh, security agencies. All he knows is that they will be investigating all the fires in the market. Right. Uh, is there a reason they are, they are a bit tight to lift us to uh, where they are starting from, exactly what the team will be doing? Is there a reason? Well, it, it's difficult for me to say yes or no. We asked that question, we put him, and he says, uh, the security agencies uh, are in a better position to answer these questions. And he said that um, those who were affected, uh, government is going to give all of them something. And it's not only market women, uh, the Makola um, station or market where they experienced fire last week, but every part uh, here in the country where they experience fires, government will give uh, uh, victims something. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Seth. Kwame Boateng is our presidential correspondent. And moving on with the news, Ghana is set to have one of the highest incidents of child marriage in the world. According to the, a report by UNICEF, one out of four girls will be married before their 18th birthday. Well, here's what the North District of the Volta region is doing to curtail the alarm and trend of child marriage. A report by Komalado. Early child marriage denies a girl of her childhood and destroys her future. This situation occurs mostly in deprived communities in the country, especially the northern part of Ghana and northern part of the Volta region. The chief of Basa in the Nkwanta North district of the Volta region is calling for help to curtail the alarming trend in the area. Ubo Kunja Deceit has been embarking on a campaign, early child marriage and encourage education. One of such campaigns he organized was a quiz competition for schools in the area. He advised both students and parents to take education seriously and secure the future of the children. He later presented educational items including computers and notebooks to participating students in schools. Speaking to Joy News, Ubo Kunja Deceit appealed to the security agencies to help arrest those who force female children into early marriages. It's like our area our people still involved in such activities, forcing children under age to marriage. So, looking at the whole team, I have made a mind of stopping that thing. And I can also stop that thing if the security or the force men assist me. So, I try organizing this quiz competition to elaborate the parents about the importance of 
education. The northern part of the Volta region has very low standards of education. It is believed that a situation of early child marriage cannot be controlled unless quality education is encouraged. Jerry Comlado's report for Joy News in Quantano. You're watching the Joy News channel. This is the Midday Brief. I'll be right back. You're welcome back. President John Mahama has set up a committee to draw up programs and plans towards uh, marking the first anniversary of the death of late President John Evans at Mills. The committee chaired by Kofi Totobi Kwache has its secretariat at the State Protocol Office in Accra. The late president passed away on Tuesday, July 24, 2012. He was 68 years old and said to have died from an acute cardiac arrest. In more news, the Convention People's Party is 64 years today, having won itself the reputation of gaining independence for the country in 1957. Very little can be said of the party's successes thereafter. Following the poor number of votes the CPP has secured over the period in subsequent general elections, it has become a common knowledge that the party is becoming unattractive to the masses of voters. Here to join you, we have been wondering what is making the CPP unpopular among other political parties. To help us find answers to some of these questions uh, is an elderly member of the party who has seen us through it all, uh, Madam Lucy Ainen. Good morning, good afternoon, rather, and uh, welcome to the midday brief. Good afternoon, my dear. Now, um, I'm not sure if I should say, say happy birthday to you or to the party, but then I'm, I'm sure it is t it's still in good in good uh, timing. Happy birthday. <laughs> the same to you. Happy birthday to all of us. <laughs> uh, absolutely, to all absolutely. Uh, what, what is the CPP doing to mark this day? Well, you know, I have been away trending funeral, so I came last night. I arrived here last night because I've lost two of my uh, niece and uh, right. nephew. Yeah, so I've been away. I arrived only last night, so and uh, I have not been in contact with the party office. Right, to be honest. But, 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 but tell me, 64 years down the line, and we are celebrating, what really comes to mind on a day like this as a politician? On a day like that, I feel so sad because I remember and I saw where the country was being moved by. The party was moving the country, you know. I knew when I was in Parliament and when even you know, the, the six years that I was in Parliament, I knew where the country was moving to. And now when, when, what I see is so bleak, you know. The uh, whole thing is so bleak to me. Uh, yes. And, and, and you think that the CPP could have done better in, in making well, this? Uh, well, my dear, the CPP, the party itself, you know, it was the founder, or the, Kwame Nkrumah was the founder of CPP. And the way they got rid of the founder, the same process they've been trying to destroy CPP. You see, this is a Nkrumah's... Uh, 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 when they got rid of it, it wasn't, it was an international conspiracy plus So many things. Because people think uh, he was, you know, I, I was opening the eyes, what I may put it, the eyes of other African leaders. You see? So he was a, 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 a bit, uh, a, a, people were afraid of him. I would just say they were partly afraid of him. And when he put up the, uh, the infrastructure in Ghana, they were scared. And, People and, were scared, yes. And oh, would, they, not even Ghanaians. Uh, some of a uh, uh, international community because right. they wouldn't, they wouldn't budge to allow people. You know, he had a sense of patriotism, as I've been saying, in nationalism. He loved Ghana so much right. that he wouldn't allow people to come and you know have their way. Do you see anybody in leadership like 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 Kwame Nkrumah now? You see, there's one thing, people, if the, I know, I have been meeting so many boys and girls now, youth, and just, uh, just uh, about the AU day, 
I, a, a guy spoke with passion. You see, there are so many of them. There are so many of them, especially who people have read in Kuma's books. And even the daughter, she is so passionate about her, her father's uh, vision. This girl, woman, is so passionate about her father's vision. People don't, who, when you come close to her, and the, and the passion that she has for the continuity of his father, uh, father's vision, you have no clue. But this family is so passionate about his father's vision but being carried out. Hasn't the yeah. CPP lost that touch? Hasn't it lost its relevance? Uh, maybe after the death of Nkrumah, if, if, if you like. Uh, well, you see, it, we have gone through so many things, so many, especially the coups and coups and coups, which has really, really destroyed this country. The so-called revolution, of a revolution, people who have no clue about nation building, they have come to destroy this country. Look, if you, I, I, I will take you back a little bit. Too bad. We have lost uh, Madame Lucienne, and she, she is an elderly member of the CPP, and she joined us in a conversation on the 64th birthday of the party. Let's move on, though. Illegal deals allegedly orchestrated by the Western Regional Manager of the Metro Mass Transit, Lawrence Fianu, and four others have resulted in the embezzlement of more than 2.5 million Ghana cities belonging to the company. As a result, the regional manager and his accomplices have been dismissed. Now, the workers are dissatisfied with the action and are instead demanding the arrest and subsequent prosecution. According to sources, the dismissed officials were asked to refund only 520,000 of the amount with no information on how the remaining would be retrieved. Now, the other officials are the accountant Stephen Ayisi, the auditor uh, Dominic Mensa, the transport officer Reverend Abraham Ogo, and the traffic supervisor Richard Bafo Inchi. Now, they are alleged to have forged the serial numbers of old receipts and used them for the deals. Meanwhile, former road safety boss Nabil Apia has now been deta detailed to take over the Metro Mass Transit. Delving a little into his experience and achievement at the Road Safety Commission, we want to know how much he is bringing on board to somewhat sanitize the operations of the beleaguered transit company and the way forward. Now, Nabulapia, we've been trying to get him on the telephone lines. As and when we do, we will bring that interview. We are also putting in efforts to raise the Ministry of Transport, uh, the Minister of Transport, rather, Jifa Ativo on the telephone line. When we're able to do so, we'll bring that interview as well. In the meantime, you're watching the Joy News channel. And this is the Midday Brief. I'll be right back. You're welcome back. Now, yesterday, the GRA continued its distress action exercise, trying as much as possible to scoop or collect uh, some 2.7 million Ghana cities from about 24 companies who are currently in default. We were there with them, and yes, some excerpts. It took a while for officials here to understand the terms of the debt management and compliance enforcement team of the GRA. Gentrack Investment Company Limited in Accra owes the GRA whooping 423,796 Ghana CDs accumulated over a five-year period. The general manager pleaded with the GRA to give them more time to settle the debt, explaining he had just taken office and knew nothing about the indebtedness. The GRA locked up the premises after officials finally vacated. Some of the staff members angry about the exercise grew even more furious upon seeing the media and had to be restrained by the security officers assisting with the exercise. <laughs> I'm 
The team then sealed off Nayak Fisheries, a coal store in Tema, indebted to the tune of 94,106 Ghana cities accumulated since 2008. The tax officials explained this was even after under declaring the tax due on fish they had imported. The sea lane shipping company limited also in Tema was closed down for not paying custom duties and taxes of nearly 160,000 cities for goods they had cleared for their clients at the port. When the goods came, the goods were put in, in bonded warehouse until such a time that they would get ready market for it. So after audit was conducted, it was realized that the goods had, well, we cannot say whether they didn't get to the warehouse or the goods were, were cleared before before the payment was made. But, but what we realized was that no payment was made. The law says after 14 days, if no payment is made, the, 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 the property will be auctioned to to, to, to defray the cost. The three companies belong to a list of 24 in Accra and Tema the GRA is hoping to retrieve 2.7 million Ghana cities from. Now the police CID have arrested a middle-aged man engaged in illegal manufacture of locally manufactured guns for the past 20 years. Now Abraham Tuafo, a blacksmith, was busted in a sting operation. The 41-year-old blacksmith is said to have been operating in Agomenya, in the eastern region, with his partner who is currently on the run. The two are said to have sold some of their guns to armed robbers, as well as the general public. The police found various locally manufactured guns, as well as the equipment used to make them. Head of the Criminal Investigations Department, COP Prosper Aglo, says an undercover agent posed as an armed robber in the operation that saw the arrest of the suspect. Abraham Akwete Otuafo agreed to sell two locally manufactured pistols to the undercover agent at a unit cost of 1,500 Ghana cities with a six-month warranty. Abraham Akwete Otuafo promised to deliver the weapons on June 10, 2013 against payment of the agreed price. On June 10, 2013, while in the process of delivering the two weapons to the buyer, Abraham Akweto Tuafo was arrested by detectives from the anti armed robbery squad of the CID headquarters. When searched, Abraham Akweto Tuafo led the detectives to another shop at Kojonya within the same district where four single barrel shotguns, three double barrel shotguns, one drilling machine and a hammer were recovered. The police have meanwhile appealed to the general public to provide information on other persons involved in the manufacture of such weapons. It is illegal under Section 6 of the Arms and Ammunition Decree 1972, NRC D9, to manufacture and assemble firearms, arms of war, munitions of war, or ammunition, including explosives in Ghana. Let's do some wellness. In wellness today, we take a look at bowls and the asking infections usually caused by the stuff bacteria. Now, these stuff infections form pockets in the skin that are filled with pus, a fluid that includes bacteria, dead skin, cells and infection fighting white blood cells. Whether the pocket of pus is called a boil or a carbuncle depends on its location and size. Let's learn more about the subject. A boil, also called a furuncle, begins as a painful infection of a single hair follicle. Boils can grow to be larger than a golf ball, but they commonly occur on the buttocks, face, neck, armpit and groin. A carbuncle is a deeper skin infection that involves a group of infected hair follicles in one skin location. Carbuncles are often found on the back of the neck, shoulders, hips and thighs and they are especially common in middle-aged or elderly men. People with diabetes are more likely to develop carbuncles. A boil looks like a red swollen painful bump under the skin. As the infection gets worse, a whitish tip, also called a point or head, can appear at the center of the ball. This tip is usually the area 
from which the bowels pass will drain. Normally, everybody like a has of bacteria growing bowels. on their skin. In fact, the mouth is one of the dirtiest places and urine is one of the most sterile. Sometimes, during periods of low immunity and stress, what happens is the bacteria start multiplying excessively because our immune system does not keep them in check. Yeah? That is when we get boils. Whenever you have a boil or a chemical, you also can have a fever and feel generally sick. A fever is more likely with a carbuncle than with a single boil. Your doctor can diagnose a boil or carbuncle by examining your skin. If you get several boils within a short period of time, your doctor may do blood tests to check for diabetes or other medical conditions that can increase your risk of repeated infections. In many otherwise healthy people, a small boil will form a white tip or come to the head and drain within five to seven days. However, very large boils or carbuncles can last longer and may not drain on their own. These may need to be drained by a physician and you may need to take antibiotics. If you have an area of skin that is prone to boils or carbuncles, keep the area clean and dry and avoid wearing tight clothes that doesn't allow the skin to breathe. Washing daily with antibacterial soap can also help. At the earliest sign of irritation or a bump at a hair follicle, use warm compressors to open up the blocked pore and drain any early infection. Small boils can be treated with moist heat, usually a warm wet washcloth, applied for 20 to 30 minutes, three or four times a day. This will help the boil drain on its own. Once the boil drains, cover it with a clean bandage to protect the skin and absorb draining pus. Wash the affected area daily with antibacterial soap to prevent the infection from spreading. Anyone who helps care for the infected area should also wash his or her hands thoroughly with antibacterial soap. Large boils and carbon coals may be treated with antibiotics. In many cases, the doctor will drain the infected area through a small incision. This will relieve pain, speed recovery, and limit scar formation. If the infection is completely drained, antibiotics may not be necessary. If the infection is deep, your doctor may fill the empty pocket that contain the pass with a strip of piece of sterile gauze. The gauze can keep the incision open, which will allow pass to continue to drain. The pocket can then heal slowly, becoming more shallow over time until it is superficial wound. You may need to return to the doctor a few times to have the gauze and dressing changed. Call your doctor whenever you have a carbuncle, a large boil or a boil that doesn't improve after a week of warm compressed treatment as described earlier. If you have diabetes, you should call your doctor even if you develop a small boil because you are more prone to developing serious infections. Most small boils heal without leaving a scar. In general, the larger the boil or carbon coal, the greater the chance that it will leave a scar. Because of this, you should see a doctor if you have a boil on your face. Antibiotic treatment and surgical drainage can help limit scar formation. In news from across the continent, Kenya's parliamentarians agreed to monthly salary of six thousand three hundred dollars following public anger over legislators' demands for higher income. These and many more in an interview. brief. Kenya's members of parliament have finally come to an agreement over their new salary. Parliamentarians on Tuesday agreed with the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, SRC, and the Parliamentary Service Commission, PSC, to a gross monthly salary of $6,300 after a deadlock in negotiations prompted several public protests against the elected politicians. They will also get a $59,500 car grant and tax free mileage allowance and a pension as per a contributory scheme. Local media reported that the SRC said the benefits were subjected to the availability of funds. The MPs had initially wanted their salaries revised to around $10,000 per month, drawing criticism across the country. 
There is an uneasy calm in central Istanbul after a night of clashes which saw Turkish route police disperse anti-government demonstrators. The protesters have gathered on Turkism Square after a day of sporadic clashes. Many have regrouped in nearby Gezi Park whose proposed redevelopment sparked the protests which have widened into nationwide anti-government unrest. The Prime Minister has said there will be no tolerance of people he accuses of seeking to harm Turkey. The demonstrators accused Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan of becoming increasingly authoritarian and trying to impose conservative Islamic values on a secular state. Erdogan is due to meet a group of people, including an actress, a singer and a writer, who he hopes can mediate with the protesters. Venezuela's electoral body has confirmed the victory of President Nicolas Maduro in the April election after carrying out an audit on millions of votes. The Venezuelan National Electoral Commission, CNE, said it had found no discrepancy with the initial results. Maduro won the vote by less than 1.5 percent point. However, opposition candidate Henry Caprils said the election had been rigged. He denounced the audit as a fake. That's it for international news, but a sports segment is next. Now, Kwasiapia insists they are focused on victory over Lesotho in the World Cup qualifier on Sunday. Coach of the Black Stars, Ghana's senior national football team, Kusia Pia, insists they are focused on a victory over Lesotho in their World Cup qualifier on Sunday rather than the final group qualifier against Zambia in September. Both Ghana and Zambia are in stiff competition for the top spot in Group D, having won their games against Sudan and Lesotho, respectively, and talk is now rife that the clash between the two sides in September will decide the group winners. However, Coach Apia says the stars who have been in Johannesburg, South Africa since last Saturday to prepare for the trip to Maseru are not overlooking the importance of the Lesotho game. Local Black Stars to play Cote d'Ivoire in Friendly today. Ghana's local Black Stars will play their Ivorian counterpart in a Friendly in Kumasi on Wednesday. The Black Stars have been trimming the rough edges at Obwasi over the past couple of weeks and will test their readiness for the Chan qualifier against Benin with the first of two-legged tie. Assistant coach Dauda Lutrot has assembled a crack side ahead of today's friendly at the Babara Stadium. He will, however, miss the services of striker Mahatma Otu, goalkeeper Fatal Dauda, and Kotoko defender Rashid Sumaila, who are on international duty with the Black Stars ahead of Sunday's World Cup qualifier against Lesotho. The team will play the same side in a similar exercise at the Lenklein Stadium in Obwasi on Friday. Time now for some showbiz news. And in a brief today, dancehall artist Elephant Man is set to headline this year's Buzz Awards. Nana Kwabna Osei, known as Chacha Black, and Omaru Mustafa, also known as Tafi, come together to form the music duo Price Tag. According to them, they have a unique style from the current crop of musicians on the market and bring on board a lot of style into the Ghanaian music industry. And their music, they say, is so touching and heartwarming. The kind of music that we do, it's, it's very touching, it touches the heart. And um, nowadays, people don't buy CDs, but listening to our track, you would spend your last cobo on it. And that doesn't mean, mean that our, our, our album or CDs have a price tag on it now, nah, but we, we just took that name just to show how expensive and how how modified uh, uh, our music is. Gotta definitely must watch out for price tag. Tinder you do man I can't leave you. 
The International Dance Hall and Reggae Fusion star Elephant Man will be headlining the major edition of Bars Awards alongside his Nigerian reggae star General Pipe. They will be performing alongside Ghanaian and Bars Awards nominees including Samini, Stoneboy, Jupiter Kaki and Natural Face. Born O'Neill Bryan in Kingston, Jamaica, Elephant Man had his first international recognition when he signed a contract with Puma for his single All Out, which was used for the 2004 Puma Olympics campaign. The Bars Awards will be held on the state of July 2013 at the National Theatre. That's it for the showbiz brief, uh, but we've been interacting with you on child labor uh, as we celebrate uh, a day against it. And some of you have been commenting on Facebook, and I'm just going to read a couple of them. And we asked, do you consider your house help as a victim of child labor and why? You tell us. Akwesi Otri, Sako Di Eduse, tells us, well, it depends on the nature of the job and how you relate with her. And then Araba Ishan also tells us, not really. However, it depends on how the house help is being treated. And so that's it for the R. Uh, thanks for your company. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amano. Let's quickly go back to the Supreme Court. Thanks for watching.